Okay, so welcome to Dad Gets Fit. This is Dad, he's gonna get fit. Um, I think first thing to talk about is like, why do you wanna go on a fitness journey? Why do I wanna get fit? Well, just look at me, <laughs> I think is the first thing. Um, yeah, so um, I used to, not be quite as chunky let's say um, and I, I would like to get back to that point again so mm -hmm. there's a photograph here that, that um, you can see of me sort of nine years ago yeah, put it in the middle huh? yeah um, and uh, that's kind of what I want to get back to because mm -hmm. I felt better I looked better um, I used to do a lot of cycling um, as you can see I was I was up next to my bike so um, so yeah I'd like to get back to that because I it's just nicer isn't it you feel mm -hmm felt healthier and uh, less uncomfortable I think um, in my clothes and all of that so yeah yeah I'd like to do that and, and of course there's some real health benefits um, I'm you know not getting any younger I'm in my 50s now so it's kind of important to um, to look after myself a bit more yeah and I guess granddad's had a heart attack your dad yeah and he has got diabetes now yeah so I guess the best thing you can do is prevent that, isn't it? Because obviously he's Absolutely. doing really well now, and he's yeah. got he has got a really healthy diet now, hasn't he? Yeah. Um, and he's he's lost weight himself. Yeah. Um, but it would be a lot easier to do that before your seventies and yeah, um, and, yeah. You know, let's do a bit of preventative stuff. Yeah, it's yeah. always better to prevent than it is to have to deal with it afterwards, isn't it? Definitely. So yeah, that's kind of it. That's why. Yeah. Okay. So I guess as well, should we talk about like? Um, like the past fitness sort of dalliances you've had because you've had a lot yeah, of sort of I have. interesting fitness uh, so experiences. when I was young, I perhaps find some photographs of me as a, as a youngster, um, mm -hmm. well in my early 20s. Like getting so, married to Yeah, time. so my wedding mm -hmm. photographs, I'm really thin. So I was always quite thin as a teenager. Um, I did go through a bit of a, of a chubby stage as a kid. Most, mm -hmm. a lot of kids do. Um, but, but then I... I you know, just just grew out of that, and it was very thin when I got married. Yeah, you um, could rake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Even yeah. mother both very very thin yeah. on their wedding days. So um, so it's taken quite a few years to um to build up the chunkiness that is me <laughs> now. Um, uh, so yeah, I've, I've not always had a problem with that, but um, but yeah, over the last few years now I'm around about my mid forties. So this is sort of ten years ago. Um, I, I, I had put on quite a lot of weight, so I was probably a bit bigger than I am right now, actually. Um, and I started to get um, some health problems, which I thought might be related to that. Um, so I got terrible cramps in my stomach, in my side really, but around my stomach area. Um, and yeah, it was like agony. I can't, I, I don't ever want to experience that again, but I, it, came, it came and went. I, had, I would have attacks. And I would get this pain. It's unbelievably painful, um, and I, of course, you, you start worrying about everything, don't you? So I start to think, you know, what if it's this? What if it's that? Um, and they never really did diagnose it properly. No, it's before I'd had any illness as well. And yeah. I often wonder if it was anything to do with that at all. It's but... it's kind of weird, isn't it? That um, we both had sort of similar um, symptoms, although yeah. mine were nowhere near as serious as yours. But the pain level acute pain I think was was possibly and even the, more yeah. acute but. and the way you described it yeah mm, it's like somebody twisting my yeah. my gut so I think the best um, diagnosis was it was irritable bowel syndrome which you know it's very kind of talked about um, anyway it was kind of strange so I lost a lot of weight then because I, I I really cut back on my eating and I, I cut out alcohol altogether I didn't have any drinks at all for about nine months um, and I lost a lot of weight, got a lot fitter. Uh, I was still getting the pain, so I was still experiencing that, and that gradually started to go, and I've not had an attack for absolutely years now, so I don't have that anymore. It's really strange. I think it's probably stress-related, yeah. obviously your situation, and there was other things that were, that were going on in my life as well. Um, but yeah, so that was, that was when I got to my kind of ideal way I suppose and that's the kind of irony is that I was at my best way when I was ill really and that's because you were doing everything you could to try yeah. and you know keep 
Because you were immediately facing a problem That's right. trying to yeah. do everything you could, yeah. So all it took was agony yeah. and the fear of death. Yeah. But we can't <laughs> emulate that again. <laughs> no, I don't really want to do that. So I want to do it properly this time. I want to lose weight. Um, I'd also like to, to do some sort of longer cycle rides. I have done that in the past. Me and a friend, we cycled from Peterborough, where we lived, to London. So that was a one cycle mm-hmm. Um, journey and then we did one to Amsterdam so we cycled down to Felixstowe and we got the ferry across and then we got to the Hook of Holland and we cycled down to Amsterdam took us a couple of days to do that um, so that was really, really good cool, yeah it was really good I really enjoyed that it was a really great um, little little trip um, so yeah to do something like that again would be would be really nice because mm, one um, of the guys at uni in yeah. first year he he wasn't like massive, but he'd like gained a bit of weight mm. since going to because everyone gains like yeah. ten pounds in freshers. Mm. It's just the rule. Yeah. Um, and he was uncomfortable and unhappy, so but he wanted to do something fun in first year holidays, so he booked a um, cycling holiday where you bike all around Europe. Yeah. So you go on to mainland Europe and then you can obviously mm. get around all over, can't you? Yeah. Once you're out off of our island, <laughs> you can bike all over. So he did that and he came back really fit. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's a great, cycling is a great way to keep fit. So I'm, I'm going to carry on doing some of that. The other um, thing that's relevant, I suppose, is about two years ago, um, I did start this journey um, and I, I, I decided to do the John O'Groats to Land's End cycle um, challenge. Um, so I, I booked my, I paid my deposit, that was all scheduled in. Um, and I actually, I get you got sent a uh, a training schedule. So it was my first day of training, and I was following the schedule. And the schedule said I had to do an hour for that first day. So I finished a bit early, and I thought I'll just just take a bit of a detour. Um, and um, I came off my bike. So I, I my my front wheel is a road bike. My front wheel just kind of went like that, mm-hmm. and I came off, um, hit my head. Um, smashed my helmet and I must have I must have held on to the the handlebars as I fell kind of weirdly mm-hmm. thinking mm-hmm. that that was the thing to do mm-hmm. and and because I'd held on to them tightly just hitting the ground sort of actually mm-hmm. broke my finger and my thumb um so my finger is still obviously deformed because of that I don't know if you can you can mm-hmm. see that um so I ended up not getting treated properly for that because I I had to go back to work so not a good thing to do but that's what happened so I kind of that's that knocked my confidence a bit so to be honest I just because I was literally I had plaster on both hands I was sat there (laughs) and um, I had to gradually get better so I I kind of stopped cycling and um, and I've gone obviously the other way again now so I now get back on my bike not on my road bike yet although I would like to get back on my road bike I'm currently on a mountain bike so this is the first time I've kind of really decided to, to give it a go again after that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I think um, the other thing, so yeah, I'm going to sort of join in with you. Um, so I kind of see you as my, a bit of a guide um, yeah. to my journey. Yeah, I'm going to be like your um, AA sponsor. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like qualified. Not, not AA in terms of alcoholics. No, but, but like, yeah. um, what is it like? Like a mentor or something, yeah, a but guide. Like, come up with like a fitness one, like yeah. an FF, yeah. <laughs> your FF sponsor. Um, but yeah, we're gonna. So yeah, just try, kind of like, it's hard to do it on your own. I it think, is because yeah. you know if you live in a household where everyone else is still doing what you were doing before, yeah, and you're trying to improve. Yeah, it can be difficult. difficult. It doesn't matter too much to me. I have to be honest. It, it doesn't bother me so much. I'm quite happy to sit there while everybody else eats pizza if I've got my my yeah. you know fitness head on really but I think maybe it's in the smaller ways it's not when they you 100% go pizza but it's when like say if you're trying to do like a high protein mm. like low carb or something because you're trying to like really fuel your muscles and that's where you want to get most of your calories from because you're doing a lot of work mm. but then every night I'm cooking pasta yeah obviously it's difficult meals planning and things like that can be a bit more tricky but, but yeah so we're going to try and like be involved a bit more and like I think the other good thing is it's um, obviously putting this on YouTube. Um, we're not gonna we're not gonna record this and then see if I do it and then put it up. We're gonna we're gonna put it up now. I 
episodically. Yeah, so this puts pressure on me to actually do it. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that might help as well. Yeah, making a bit of an announcement yeah, and doing it. Yeah, committing to it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think, so yeah, we're going to obviously do the cycling. Yeah. Um, and you don't necessarily need my help with that. Like, you've no. cycled before, you know what you're doing. You'll probably take the lead on that. It's just like a bit of moral support. I'll yeah. go with you. And it's a nice thing to do together as yeah. well. Because um, we do a lot of work together, so it'll be nice to do yeah. an activity. Um, and now lockdown's easing a bit, we are allowed to go out more than once. Yeah, so I can right. still take the dog out and go on a cycle. And of course I do my bike and psych thing, which you may have seen. Um, if you've not, check out bike and psych. Um, it's basically, because I've studied psychology, so I like to think about psychology when I'm on my bike. So I talk about it as I go around Peterborough on the cycle routes. Um, so I'll continue to do that. That'll be a way. Now we did talk about having a goal, didn't we? Yeah. So I think we need to set sort of goals um, so that when we do come back on for the next episode, there's something to sort of aim towards mm. and like spur you on and keep things going. So. Yeah. Um, do I need a, an ultimate goal? Do I need a goal yeah, to, to aim for? I think an ultimate goal. So maybe if you, maybe you could print that picture out if that's like yeah. your goal. Yeah. Because they often say that thing like oh if there's an outfit you want to wear like put mm. that at the front of your wardrobe and yeah. you can aim it but maybe yeah have that picture of you at your fittest even though you were struggling with like the tummy thing but you mm. were really fit in that you could mm. bike really far and you were oh, yeah. like strong so that's like a good goal to aim towards maybe yeah i think um, i probably should have a, a target weight as well um that that normally helps me mm -hmm. to to do it although you know, obviously I don't always achieve it. Mm. Um, I suppose it's difficult as well, though, because you might be gaining muscle, or you mm. will be gaining muscle. Um, but, I mean, my my body mass index, mm -hmm. um, for my height, I'm about 5'8", so I'm not really tall. Um, my BMI um, says I should be about... Um, well, we use stones and pounds. Um, I'll translate this into just pounds because most people talk about that, don't they? Now, or maybe kilograms. I'll do all of that. Just put it all. But we use. Yeah. We're in England and we use stones. We do and use pounds. stones and pounds. So eleven and a half stone is is at the the upper end of what's considered ideal for my height. Um, there's plenty to go there. I could go lower, but that's that's the upper end. So mm. I, that's where I normally like to be for my general build. I think eleven and a half stone is. I actually feel healthy and I don't look too, too I think, skinny. I think that's what Thomas is, and yeah. you're about the same yeah. height. So I think that's going to be my goal, around 11 and a half stone, because mm -hmm. that puts me in the ideal sort of band, mm -hmm. so I'll no longer be overweight, or I'm probably obese in that category mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, so obviously we're going to come up with a bit of a food plan, do you think? Yeah. Like, to be a bit more mindful yeah. of what you take, what we're like taking in in order for the workouts to better fruit I suppose yeah. so yeah so I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna be upfront um about this and say that I when I do diets I, I generally um as you know kind of go mad you know yeah. in terms of I basically fast so there is a diet around that's like the 5-2 diet which means you you eat normally for five days and then you fast for two days I do it the other way around so I fast for five days and then eat normally for two days um and apparently that's not a good thing to do according to you um no, and probably not, science really yeah science <laughs> says it's like dad has like a really scientific logical like evidence-based mindset in general life but then when it comes to like health and fitness it just like dies yeah i, I i've got this conflict between my scientific brain and my just get on with it brain you know because i'm mm. very once i'm determined to do something i, I yeah. really go for it so I think that's I'm a bit impatient so I really want results straight away I want to yeah. do it as quick as possible however but the evidence mm. does suggest that short-term like redonkulous weight loss does not last in the long term okay so you made a claim there I'd like to see the papers on which that's based okay, we can find them because there's <laughs> loads but then other thing is like in in your personal evidence mm has has it long term had effects well obviously not because i'm yeah. sitting <laughs> so maybe we try <laughs> a different down. approach oh, okay. <laughs> but we can find the evidence if you like, yeah. like i don't i don't have a problem with finding those papers because there's like it's like you know how doctor um scientists like 90 percent 
agree that global warming is yeah. a man-made thing and yeah. it's like 10 percent are like mm. well 90 percent of like dietitians and health experts agree, don't dietitians agree. are not scientists though are they health experts and they and they have trained a lot and they're important oh, okay. you're not a dietitian that is true that is true you know, because they, they can help you. Because like, in, health is individual as well. Mm. So, like, I... We could do the exact same fitness routine, but we're not going to... I'm not going to need as many calories to continue my, like, stationary weight. So if we were just maintaining our current weights, you would still need to eat more than me to maintain your weight than I would, you know? Well, possibly. You don't know. Because... Well, you know, men typically need more calories, mm. and you are taller than me, so you would need mm. more calories to maintain mm. yourself. Possibly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why are you saying possibly? Well, because that's a claim. We haven't tested it. Well, that's, I'll get all the papers and I'll just link them below. <laughs> but it's just that's just basic. Okay. Like, all right. Like, no, I'm willing yeah. to 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 accept that, and um, we'll do it your way. Healthy. We'll see how it goes. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah, and I think, like I'm saying, I'm not saying that like. You need to eat like, you know, three square meals a day. You might be like, mm. I'd rather have two bigger meals. That's yeah. fine. Or you might want five really small meals because some people prefer to graze throughout the day. Yeah. Whatever. But I think you need to make sure you get enough calories so that you don't get exhausted. Yeah, I suppose that's an interesting thing. We'll have to sort of think about this as we go. But I, I'm not keen on on like having a very strict kind of diet that is subscribed for me that I have to eat this today and this no. and the next day and I, I just can't be doing with that no. and I, I must also say that um, I've recently signed up to a great thing it's, we don't have you know it's not sponsored by this guy this be this great thing. if we were yeah but there's this um, thing called beer 52 which um, <laughs> I've signed up to a subscription which means that I get eight um, beers mm-hmm. uh, craft beers a month mm-hmm. that um, come through come to my door um, and I, I don't want to. I don't want to stop doing that. So no, I think that's fine. I'm a bit of a treat. Yeah, I think definitely have treat. This is what I mean. Is in like don't go aggro. Mm. Like, or, if people don't know what aggro means, <laughs> don't go like aggressive on it. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like, because uh, I'll use another like colloquialism. You don't want to be mardy all the time. You don't want to mardy. Yeah, you don't want to be in a mood all the time, do yeah. you? Because like, no, that's right. You don't want to be constantly like, obsessively thinking about food as well. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Like constantly yeah. being like, when can I eat? Oh, I just want to eat. I want to eat. And yeah. it's like, you want to live your life. Because that's just yeah, not exactly. sustainable, is well, it? Well, that's right. Yeah, that's right. So how much weight do you think I should be losing every week? Every week. Well, at the beginning, I think you might lose quite a lot regularly. Because when you first start, mm-hmm. you often do, like when you're starting a bit bigger, you do lose more at the beginning, yeah. don't you? But then I think... The NHS website says something like one or two a week. Mm, one or two pounds. Yeah. Mm. Once you've, like, you know, once you've. You got rid of all the kind of fluid retention yeah, stuff and, and everything. Yeah. And, yeah. like, you know, when you first when you first swap from maybe. It depends on your previous diet. I don't think yeah. they're particularly unhealthy. I don't think no. we eat loads of junk, do we? Um, no, I'm, I'm a bit of a binge eater, right? I must admit. So, mm. um, I, I don't generally. I, I eat healthily, but. Um, I can easily get through a full packet of crisps, you know, yeah. very easily. Not a big packet, yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think I, when I do indulge, I probably uh, that's my problem, I suppose. So mm. I need to be careful of that. I think I would stop doing that. Really. Yeah, I think personally, what I'm going to try and do is have my sweet treat in the evening not always be like a high calorific mm. sweet treat or yeah. like one that's got nothing good in it other than. I enjoy because it it's sweet. Do you mm. know what I mean? So like, we've ordered some yogurt, and I'm gonna have like nice mm. like yogurt with fresh honey and some fruit put on top of it. Yeah. And like, I know it sounds a bit a bit like you could be like, oh, but I just wanted a magnum. <laughs> but if you have a magnum every night, yeah, that's a lot of calories. That's, a, that's isn't like it? an ice cream bar with yeah. chocolate smothered on it, isn't it? Yeah. Which obviously is it's probably about three hundred calories. I think it actually. is. Yeah. I think it is, and you don't think about it because it's just this little yeah, thing. But true. if you think about that, that's a lot every because yeah. we've been having like a little because also let let's let's be kind to ourselves lockdown's hard um yeah that's right yeah. so we have been having like a mm. sweet treat every evening but and i think we i still need my sweet treat in the evening yeah. i like it yeah, yeah. so i'm not going to deprive myself of it and sometimes i will still have a magnum or a piece of cake but i do think that having yogurt and fruit or um, yeah like i've ordered some like graves proteiny flapjacks 
instead to have that mm. satisfaction of a cup of tea and a sweet thing yeah without it being like but you're not losing weight it's me yeah but i feel like if i'm doing that then we can all sort of right okay because i don't want to force i'm not a social person i don't care what you're doing <laughs> you, you imagine that by you yeah, doing I'm, it if it's I'm gonna buy, help me but if i'm but buying I'm, it yeah then it's here well yeah it? obviously if you're buying it but I, i'm not really somebody that that follows what other no. people are doing so I suppose that doesn't not. help me very much well what do you want me to do like, slap it out of your hand and get an ice cream I'm like no no well you can just report back on me to the yeah, world I suppose you know, just so, yeah. tell everybody what I've been doing but I think yeah you're not it, the thing that's difficult this is what you'll think will be our challenge we should probably talk about challenges a little mm. bit one thing that I think will be a challenge is that you're not like a big lover of the health foods like it is a bit of a challenge Mm. to engage you with the health foods (laughs) yeah i'm not a big fan of fruits um i will eat grapes i quite like um so bottle of grapes but that in itself is probably the worst fruit in a way because there's lots of sugar in grapes um so they're they're not necessarily healthy but but it's in a fibrous thing so Mm. there's like so it's more difficult to break down so it's like it takes energy to break it mm. down and so on and it's like wait obviously when you just have chocolate it's just it's just sugar oh yeah so it is yeah. better um i i go for the savory stuff so mm-hmm. yeah crisps and um, snacks things like that i can i can eat um but i like chocolate and things like that i, I like a bit of chocolate but i, I can be sure. very very controlled with that so what one or two squares of chocolate is enough actually mm. sweet thing for me it's more that that um that savoury stuff. So that's the that's the one I need to, to work on the most. I have ordered some savoury snacks that are a bit mm, healthier instead yeah. of crisps. Right. So this is um, this is the way in. Um, I've got t-shirt on and shorts. So that's kind of what I need to wear every time I do a way in. Yeah. So it's the same every time. All right. Here goes nothing. These are the most basic scales. You They're can hard to get. read. I find. yeah, I know you have to go. Around. I can't read them. What I have to do is take a photograph of them. I actually have to film myself being waved. Well, I think it's right. So it looks like fourteen, and then one, two, fourteen, four. Fourteen, four. Are they um, four lines? Four lines. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's the each line is two pounds. Okay. So two. That's fourteen eight, is it? Yeah. Just over fourteen and a half. Yeah. So just over fourteen and a half stone. And then I think what's the red one? Is that pounds? Or is that? Oh, what are we? What's so it say? Ninety-three. kilograms. Sorry. Ninety-three kilograms. So yeah, there you go. Okay, so fourteen and a half, fourteen stone eight. So yeah, okay. Yeah, we just said you're 14 stone 8 currently. Yeah. Did you work out the pounds? Yeah, that's um, that's about 206 pounds. Mm-hmm. I don't know if my, my calculations are correct. Yeah. Um, um, that's about a BMI of 31 straight 32, um, which is actually just in the obese category. So I'm, I'm just in that kind of orange zone, if okay. you like, um, which obviously is not nice i don't like being in that category but it's not as far as i have been in the past mm-hmm. so um i'm yeah it won't take much for me to get out of the obese to the overweight that kind of means a lot to me yeah, so that's that's, that's the first thing i want mm-hmm. to so my first goal really is to is to move out of that um obese category and just into being purely overweight and mm-hmm. um, then that's quite a wide category it's, that's quite a big um yeah. area and so i've got quite a long way to go then before i I get back to just being sort of ideal again. Mm. Um, yeah. Okay. So that's um, that's where I am. Yeah. So I guess goals wise, we're going to we'll do this again next week. So yeah. So is... if we do this every week, mm-hmm. um, I'll do a weigh in every week. We'll mm-hmm. put that up online. Yeah. And um, yeah, I don't. I don't suppose I personally don't want to make this into it. You know, here's how you can do it because no, I don't no, even no. know if I can do it. It's really just a. A story really it's an yeah. experience and we thought we'd put it on video yeah and i think it's good to have your experience because there's not loads of that online what for old men yeah yeah, yeah. no that's true isn't it yeah well because everybody i feel like and if you say you haven't i think you're lying if you haven't i think everybody googles slash youtubes 
how to get fit in some variety because you're either trying to lose weight, gain muscle, whatever. Mm. And I think there's um, a lot of representation for me as mm. a twenty year old or twenty yeah. something year old woman. Yeah. But I don't think there's a there's not as much representation for men no. at all. And however, obviously with cookies, I might not be getting served up. Yeah. What true. might be there? Yeah. But mm. in my experience of search, mm. if just searching non gendered anything, yeah. I only see. And what, what, when I do see things, I must admit, I get a bit frustrated because it feels like really preachy. Mm. And, you know, oh, don't do this and don't do that and don't do this and don't do that. And you know what I'm like? I'm quite, um, I'm quite sort of... Difficult. Yeah, that's the <laughs> way. I don't like being told what no. to do. And I don't like being preached at. No. And there's a kind of, um, I don't know, a shaming element that I just get really fed up yeah, with. Yeah, I think we need to stop. There's a woman called Abby Sharp that I quite like because she's mm. a dietitian but she does a lot of like intuitive eating and stands against kind of um, shaming foods or calling mm. some foods good foods yeah. and some foods bad yeah. foods because obviously there's it's it's not on the um, sort of list of psychiatric problems but mm. there is a thing called orthorexia where you basically get obsessed with health and fitness mm. to mm. the point where it's like you, you, you're not a really healthy body but your mind is not healthy mm. in the way it reacts to it um, so I think yeah, you when you've got a bunch of people preaching, um, yeah, you end up with this sort of like yeah cult of well, you healthy. Can, you can life. end up with that, or like me, I just it just turns me off to be honest. Yeah. So I just think, well, I, you know, I'm not going to be told what to do, no. so I'm just going to do what I want. So yeah. um, I, I hope we're not going to we won't be doing any of that. No, no. Um, right, I'm really hungry now. Yeah. I had breakfast and you've not yet not, had not yet had breakfast no. no so I like to weigh myself before I eat really so I have had a couple of drinks got coffee and tea mm -hmm. um, anyway so today is what's the date today let's check 21st I believe yeah 21st, 21st of, May. of May 2020 um, so if we do this again in a week's time mm -hmm. then we'll see whether I've I've improved on my 14.8 I'd like to lose at least two pound a week I think yeah, I think like I said at the beginning, mm. like, you might average it out because I think yeah. at the beginning, like sometimes you might lose like in the first month or so, you might lose like five pound mm. or something one mm. week because a lot of like say because you know sometimes you eat toast for breakfast if you just didn't eat the toast maybe or if you haven't mm. had um, wine because that's quite high calorie mm. isn't it and things yeah. like that. So you might just see that go down really yeah. quickly with those first sort of changes, and yes. then it might plateau a little bit. And yeah. then sometimes it might go down a bit, you know. Yeah. So what what we'll do next next time? I'll I'll tell you what I've done, yeah. and whether that's had any effect. Yeah. That's probably the best thing. I suppose we we'll do like little performance reviews of testing things out. Yeah. Like, this worked, or this didn't yeah. work, or this is how I responded to that. Because then some like generally people can learn from it because there's a lot of things, and then people with like body similar to you might be like, okay, yeah, fair, fair. Yeah. 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 Okay, cool. cool. Right, see you next week. Oh, don't forget to subscribe yeah. to the Evil Sheep channel. There's all sorts yeah. of things on it. So subscribe if you want to keep following the journey, mm. and we'll be talking about that. And also, there's so many other things. We've yeah. got, like, we, we do a lot of cooking as well, and I'm, I'm sure we'll do more cooking videos yeah. while we're on this journey. So we'll be doing this, yeah. like the healthy noodle thing that I do. You really like the noodles. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. So anyway, like so um, yeah, so so subscribe to the channel and. Um, Subscribe yeah. for the lifestyle, food, sometimes we sing. Sometimes bit of philosophy, a bit of science, bit of psychology. Films. Films. We do short films as well. Yeah. Okay. Right, ring the bell, like, do watching. all of the